exactly the best job in terms of our own health care delivery. One of the things that I say when I'm doing meetings in Dar es Salaam or in Tanzania is I say, you know, in our country we have almost 50 million people who are uninsured. That's more people than you actually have in the whole country of Tanzania. So, you know, I'm here to help you and learn from you. It's not that I'm here to tell you that we have all the answers. And then Shikomo. The heroes are in the trenches. The ideas are in the trenches. This is my colleague who is in northern Tanzania who has developed a device. He started his own clinic with a one-room dirt floor and came up with a system of actually distributing clean water in each of the rooms and has built now a 26-room facility. If I'm going to learn how I can provide clean water in a facility, I'm going to make sure I'm going to speak to my colleague. So a couple things. I see that uh, my time is winding down, so uh, I'll, I'll probably take the liberty of skipping through a few things, but I promise the timekeeper that uh, I will keep the time plus or minus a minute or two, so don't, don't get too worried. So the sandbox, uh, something that I've worked on uh, quite a, a bit over the last number of years is creating an innovation sandbox that is what we call connecting the dots. Connecting dots to folks like you, to connecting dots to folks in the field, and let's see what magic that we can come up with together to find new solutions. Um, and in this particular case, it's been very focused. We've worked within Tanzania, we've worked with the private sector, the, the, the public sector, and you can see we have represented roughly across the country, not um, one for one up here, but roughly about 300 sites across the country in each of the regions that we've worked to place people over the years. And this is our Petri dish. Now, as a part of a Petri dish, as you go through the phases of experimentation, you have maturity. So you have some things that start as an idea, and then they move to maturity. And we have examples of things that started with undergraduates helping us that have then gotten funded by the IFC and the World Bank to continue. So there is no idea that should go unlistened or unwarranted. Um, and we screen them and we pilot them. And we have a whole list of activities that we go from clinical research all the way down to business planning and strategic planning. And these are some of the tools that we can talk more about. Um, and basic tools like strategic analysis, a workflow analysis, Examples that we have, maternal M health for maternal and child health, using low-cost diagnostics from uh, laboratories with colleagues uh, uh, at Harvard, uh, looking at cost effectiveness of various interventions for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Um, I see 30 seconds. If I go over 30 seconds, do I fall? Do I? No, no. Okay. I'll talk to the time. Okay, no, no, he's doing a great job. <laughs> Sustainability of orphan care. We went in, uh, one of, uh, uh, just a really a marvelous group of young doctors who on their own dime, and one of those doctors actually had grown up in an orphanage, had gone and started with his fellow doctors, residents, to starting to deliver health services to orphanages in Dar es Salaam out of their own pocket. Now, up until recently, the average resident doctor was making roughly about $200 a month, and they were combining together to purchase fuel and go out and serving the community. And what we did is we went in, we looked at their costs, and we said, you know what? I don't think you need to go and take money out of your pocket. I think if we were to go to some of the various organizations locally and we look at your processes, we could actually scale out for the same money we could actually scale out your operations. And lo and behold, we looked at it, and now they've multiplied their ability to service the community by three times on the same amount of money. Health system strengthening is another uh, very important area that I'd be happy to talk about during the break. Lessons learned. So this is where I'm going to be wrapping up, talk about what I think are some of the things I would like to uh, share with you. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, I kind of it's common sense things, things that you probably your grandmother would tell you before you would walk out the door for a visit. So first, the idea of respect and Harvard who. We heard before earlier that this concept of you know a hungry child doesn't really care if you have a PhD or what school you're from. Well, this is an example that you may have seen in the news, but uh, through the tsunami. Um, there is a little baby hippo that had been orphaned. 
and lo and behold, one of the most unlikely matches that possibly could have imagined was this like 100 year old tortoise had come along and mothered this hippo. Now this is an early stage photo, but you can imagine as the hippo got older, there is this huge hippo trying to snuggle next to this now little tortoise. And I bring that up because you have the most unlikely of matches, especially if you keep an open mind of how you're willing to help and listen to people in the field. Over and over, people first, technology second. This is all about the people and listening to what it is that they need. These are actually pictures. This uh, uh, picture, I'm sorry, oh, I can't point. These are pictures actually from that very uh, uh, group that serves the orphanages. And uh, up above is another orphanage that started a school that's sustainable because they can actually charge user fees. There's actually, it's gotten such a great reputation in the community that you actually have children who have both their parents are actually paying the orphanage school so they can attend. Um, pay attention, the obvious is not only so obvious, and I promise you that I'm wrapping up, I'll be done very soon, is um, here's another example around malaria. Obviously very critical, one of the most leading causes of death in Tanzania. Um, one of the things, I'll, I'll short circuit this story, but ultimately one of the things that was discovered was that first of all in certain regions, hard to reach regions, over 80% of all care and treatment for malaria is delivered by faith-based organizations and the private sector. Yet there was a policy that had been in place that only public health facilities could actually get access to low-cost drugs. What does that mean? So if you go to a private sector facility that's <coughs> serving, servicing vulnerable populations, that same drug that may cost 30 cents would now cost $8. So think about what that means for groups or, or folks that may live on less than $1 a day. Don't take no for an answer. These are actually things that have happened to me um, over the years. Um, this one was, uh, uh, I, I'm anonymous, I don't share the names, but uh, I sent out some updates from the field. This one, no disrespect, but please take me off your distribution list. The other common one that you get is no response. Or you'll get things like, what is your business case or what is your ROI? So again, perseverance. This is about, it may not be successful the first time or you may not have a lot of people who, who may help you out, but hopefully in this community you do. But the idea is don't take no for an answer. There's no magic parachutes. The HbA1c, even though it's a wonderful intervention for improving quality of care for people with diabetes, I'll tell you what, it wouldn't be adopted unless we had folks like you in the field assessing what are the barriers to adoption. And uh, sort of wrapping up, I just have another slide after this, is uh, we are all in this together, and truly this is something that um, I believe in, that this is not about I or working alone in the field. And I'm going to close up here with uh, one of my favorite quotes, which is, in terms of a way forward and how we can uh, blaze a trail together, is uh, J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, spoke at a commencement a few years ago, and she gave this uh, wonderful quote, which says, we do not need magic to change the world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. So I say, and we've already heard from colleagues previously, that let us be, let you be, let us collectively be this benchmark example that in 10, 20 years from now, we can say, remember when we missed that MDG goal, or remember when those figures for infant mortality or maternal mortality was so high, and remember what we did to combat that? That, I think, is the type of world that we all want to live in. And I want to thank you for your time, and uh, I'm going to very much enjoy staying the rest of the day and hearing your ideas and how you would like to be engaged. So thank you very much. Thank you so very much. We're going to go directly into the Q&A and skip my sum up because I think it's very, very important that you have the opportunity to ask him your questions. I'm going to take three questions right away, one from that side, one from the middle, and one over here. We'll start over here. Any questions? Going, going, gone. I'm going to the next section. Question? Right here. The same as before, again, how can we become involved? 
Can you push?